magpies. Their calls in the morning are absolutely glorious. But do these aerial antagonists actually have humans in their sights? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> It's the screaming that makes this one. Oh, it's so persistent. I love it. Is that the dad filming? Yes, that's filming. That's the dad filming and he's just laughing. Here he comes. The things you do for internet points, hey? You sacrifice your child. He got me. That's an absolute ripper. I love that he's screaming the whole way and the magpie does not care. So in magpies, it's almost always only the male that swoops and of all of the male magpies something like six to twelve percent of them swoop they only do it for a certain time of the year and that is nesting so in this case the kiddo on the scooter has absolutely got it he's only worried about this quick moving bright t-shirt wearing screaming menace to society i'm talking about the kid not the magpie most of the serious injuries that occur in relation to magpies are actually the person's reaction to the magpie. What's really interesting is you can hear the magpie vocalising in that and that is the sound of a magpie who is a little bit angry and territorial, right? So it's saying get away. And like many animals, the magpie actually gives you a warning before it swoops. So if you learn to listen for that sound, you will hopefully never be surprised by a magpie swoop ever again. Oh. Is that a group of magpies having a meeting in the middle of the road? Yes, do we have a quorum, gentlemen? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, a snicky. See, I was so busy looking at the birds, I did not see the snake. It's like they're giving it a security escort. And I suppose in a manner they are right, because if they keep their eyes on it, then the young ones in their group or whatever are not going to be endangered by the snake. In this little group of magpies, you can see the variation in their plumage. It's like some of them have got little black vests on and some have black and white spotty vests on. And that's because over their whole range, there's actually several subspecies of magpies. So when you actually see a magpie, taking notice of where the black bits are, where the white bits are, is gonna tell you a lot of information about that individual. Oh no, not at the footy. That's un Australian. Oh! Don't look at it, mate. The Forbes magpie's attacking. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going for the umpy for a minute. Oh, no. Has it taken a dislike to that one person in particular? <laughs> appears to have. <laughs> oh, poor mugger. See, why has that magpie decided that that one person, that one person's grandfather might have insulted that magpie. That's how smart magpies are. Researchers have shown that they can recognise, you know, tens of human faces. How they did that experiment was by wearing masks of human faces that the magpies were already scared of. <laughs> and they found that they would swoop individuals. So, yeah, I don't know what that person did, but RIP their football career. Oh. Aww. That is so beautiful. I mean, it sounds really loud though, and, and magpie song can be really loud. They can make sounds up to like 70 decibels, which is sort of like a lawnmower. And I think it's important to note that they don't actually have pink butts. I think that's the reflection from the car. They actually have little pure white butts. Very cute. The scientific name for the Australian magpie is Cracticus tibison. Tibison actually means flautist, <laughs> which is sort of beautiful. They've been known for their music ever since they've had a Western scientific name. They can mimic something like maybe 35 sounds per individual. Oh, hello. No, play. Look at those tooties. They're so sweet. They're playing. So exploring their environment, exploring each other. There are heaps of ways to test intelligence and one of the things to do is give them puzzles. So researchers presented Australian magpies with a puzzle that had two transparent walls with some food in between 
It was too deep down so the magpie couldn't just use its beak to get in there and take the food out. And they actually found that some of these wild magpies would use a stick to get the food out. Now this is tool use. This is something that we would associate, say, with primates, with ourselves, we use tools. It shows a level of critical thinking, of perhaps planning, of cognition that is unusual, really, in the bird world. It's the first time they'd actually found that in Australian magpies. They will be the next contestants on the block. Maybe we're never gonna settle this. For some people, they're just mischievous, singing maestros. And for others, they're absolutely deadly swoopy boys. But either way, you have to admit, magpies are extremely beautiful and intelligent. Thanks for watching through to the end. I actually have a podcast for the ABC called What the Duck. It's like I got on a hotline with all of the weirdest stuff that's out there in nature. I'm talking naked mole rats. I'm talking swizzle penises. If you can think about it, then I can put it on my podcast. So head over there and subscribe.